Hello and welcome to problem 5 of Project Euler. I am more excited to talk about this problem than any of the ones that I've done so far. I am really happy with how it turned out and I think you will be too. Enough said. Let's solve this thing. So here we have our problem statement. 2520 is the smallest number that can be divided by each of the numbers from 1 to 10 without any remainder. What is the smallest positive number that is evenly divisible by all of the numbers from 1 to n? I'm sure there is a name for this phenomenon, but when you solve this problem via brute force, you will see a pattern emerge. The answers for the first few is 2, 6, 12, 60, 60 again, 420, and 840. You'll probably notice that each number is evenly divisible by the previous number. This doesn't seem at all important immediately, but it will when we get into the double digits. For example, the smallest positive number for 1 to 20 is 232,792,560. Let's keep that step in mind while we're writing our solution. Here are our steps. We're going to loop over all values, starting with 2, loop over each number from 1 to n, check to see if that number is divisible. If not, go to the next loop. If it is divisible, go to the next number. If we reach n and all previous values are divisible, return our smallest number. Enough idle chit chat. Let's code. Working on the free code camp uh, project Euler page again, let's set up our state. So we're going to let our incrementer equal 2, because we're starting from 2. We're going to let our step also start at 2, as I mentioned earlier in the brute force demonstration. And we're going to say the smallest num is also equal to 2. In order to loop over all the numbers, I've devised this little while loop um, to do so. So we're going to do a while, oops, smallest num is less than or equal to the number value in JavaScript and max safe integer. And this is going to loop over every integer within JavaScript, which is a lot. So we need to make sure that we have an exit or a return statement in here. Otherwise, this is going to go on forever. So now we have to count up from 2 up into n. And we're going to do that by setting up a for loop. So for let our incrementer equal 2, because we're just starting even values. But we don't want it to increase. Or, oops, yeah, it's got to be e less than or equal to n, which is the value that gets passed into the function, and then we're going to increase. So for this for loop, it's going to start at 2, and it's going to go all the way up to n, which is the number that gets passed into the function. Now let's set up a variable to check and see if this number is divisible. So divisible equals smallest num modulus i equals equals zero. And that just means that if there is any remainder, then it's not evenly divisible. So then we'll check that. If bang divisible or not divisible, we're just going to break this loop and go to the next one. If it is divisible, we want to do two things. So we're going to check to make sure our incrementer is the same as our global incrementer, we're going to set the step to the smallest number, and then we're going to increment our uh, global incrementer by 1. And then finally, if we have reached the limit, which means that our internal incrementer for the for loop is equal to n, the value that gets passed in, we return the smallest num. And one final piece, we'll put this all together. So the for loop, whenever it breaks out, we want to change the smallest number to be the smallest number plus the step that we just found. And what that does is that instead of incrementing our smallest number and going one by one, we're increasing it by this step that we mentioned earlier, and that will reduce the amount of time it takes to run considerably. I'll talk about that in a minute. And of course, if we run it, ta-da! Good job, team. So let's just walk through this real fast so that we get an understanding of what we're doing. So we're setting up a function. It's going to take in n, and that n number is this one from the problem. 
<clears throat> so give me anything 1 to 100, whatever. We're going to set up our global state, set up a global incrementer, a global step, and a global smallest num. Then we're setting up this while function that's going to go from the smallest num, which is 2, all the way up to the max one, because you really don't know what that number is going to be, because for 20, I mean, it's 232 million, so you're just not going to know what the maximum value is. And then within that, you're setting up your for loop, and that for loop starts at 2 and goes up until n, incrementing each time. And then once we're inside the for loop, it's going to do all of this code. So we're going to check to see if it's divisible, and if it is divisible, or if it's not divisible, we're going to break out, and it's going to make the smallest number equal to the smallest number plus our step. If it is divisible, continue with the code. We're going to make sure that our i is equal to our incre global incrementer. We're going to increase our step to equal our smallest number, and we're going to increase our global incrementer by 1. And then finally, if i is equal to n, we're going to return our smallest number, and this will be our final smallest number. Before we depart, I'd like to talk a bit about performance. The brute force method of solving this problem took an average of 1100 milliseconds to evaluate the smallest multiple for 20. When I used the improve method, that step method, that runtime reduced to 7 milliseconds. That's a decrease of the runtime of more than 15,000%. Holy cow. This is definitely the hardest problem that I've solved so far. I could not get it to work using the brute force method, so that forced me into doing it another way. I'm glad I did it though. Uh, it taught me a lot about math in general. Uh, like all things, this can be improved. If you got recommendations or improvements, uh, throw them in the comments and let me know. And as always, happy coding. <laughs>